Hey everybody, Brooks and Drag Times here. I'm at the Supercharger here with the Tesla Model S Raven. And we just got the brand new update. You might have seen it leaked out a little bit on Twitter, but it has the latest launch mode in this car, along with some other features, which include the dash cam viewer. We'll go over the dash cam viewer a little later, but we got the car charged up to 100% right here. And the new launch mode is enabled. It is way, way better. I'm gonna go over exactly how it works. And I hear there's a peak power increase of about 30 horsepower, maybe more, and more power under the curve, and a lot of other good stuff. Then I'm gonna do some benchmarking with the Draggy and the V-Box and see just what the difference is, along with the power puts. Let's get in the car, take a little drive, and see how it goes. So here are the release notes. You got the upgraded dash cam viewer, you got performance and launch mode improvements, and you got out of order supercharger stalls. All right, so the interface has changed a little bit. Now we got, of course, you got chill support, ludicrous, ludicrous plus. Now when you press ludicrous plus, it immediately asks you if you want to push the limits. No, I'm a money or yes, bring it on. You press there. Then you get the familiar uh, readout here where it brings up the temperature. After it gets to the 50 degrees, it'll come up with the uh, kilowatt. And then we can actually, we'll be able to see exactly what the max kilowatt is for the updated uh, launch mode. I believe there's definitely more power and we're about to find out what that is. Quick, here we go. We got the car in ludicrous plus mode. You can see the readings out there. You can see the batteries up the temperature at 50 degrees. You can also see this, look at this. The peak is 600. I don't think I've seen that before. Regen's obviously limited because we are at 100% state of charge. Let's go ahead and give this a rip and see what it does. All right, so the updated launch sequence is way, way better. Before, we would botch a lot of launches uh, when heads up racing at the drag strip because you would have to completely stage and then you would press one down and let up. Then you'd have to press down again. And then hopefully, because it didn't always work, it would go into launch mode. You would feel it buckle down and then you only had like four seconds from that point on to launch. So depending on who's staging first and so forth, it could get really, really messy racing heads up. Now it's much simpler. There's no double pump. All you do is put the launch mode on, stage, put the foot on the brake, hold down. And from that point, the front lowers down and you got about 15 seconds to actually launch the car. It's a way, way simpler process to launch the car. And I think a lot of people who drag race this car are gonna be much, much happier with the results. All right, let's get a little demonstration of launch mode here. When you go into launch mode, you can see the front drop down. There it goes, you can see it drop down. Wow, it drops really low. Now you got 15 seconds to let it go. There it goes. All right, here we go, launch mode enabled. Let's see it drop down. Look how far it drops down. It drops, 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 drops really far. And I'm gonna go to the back. Here we go. Wow, rocket. All right, so here we go, ready for our first test of the ludicrous updated launch mode. Launch enabled. Oh, there we go. It feels good. Peak kilowatt is 614. We are flying here. Woof. That's a lot more power, folks. A lot more, I think that's an extra almost 40 kilowatts of power added 614 peak right there Whew. let's see what we got zero to 60 2.4 seconds on the v box could be even lower launch enabled oh there we go it feels good peak kilowatt is 614 we are flying here Oof. All right, so trap speed at 127 and a half miles an hour. And it might get even faster when you, we run it up with the battery a little hotter. Now where it is, this can sustain multiple quarter mile runs just two minutes apart. So I think we'll do some little testing with that as well. 
because I feel I believe the thermal limits of the car have been raised to uh, allow for more performance runs over and over again. All right, here we go. Launch mode. Here we go. We're moving. Here we go, launch mode. Here we go. 30, 60. We're moving. Woof. All right, so now what I want to do is test how long we can actually sit in launch mode. You can see my friend standing right there. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go into launch mode, see how long it takes to drop, and then see how long we can actually hold in staging if we were actually drag racing the car. All right, pedal pressed, launch mode enabled, still drop, still drop. That takes a while. Now I'm just going to let it sit here and see when it drops out. both pedals pressed so about 10 seconds before that happens interestingly enough after I hear it hit the bump stops I can almost hear a little bit of buckling in the car trying to move but normally you would hear this car immediately scrunch down and try and go and sometimes when drag racing it's hard to keep that from creeping you really really got to hold on the brake so interesting that uh, after launch moding it says launch mode enabled it's still continuing to drop after drops I felt a little bit of torque coming on So another big feature they just released was the updated dash cam viewing software. So before you'd have your drive in here and to view the footage, you'd have to pull that out, bring it into your house, dive through all the dates, sort through what you want. And then in each folder, you got four files for the front, the sides and the rear. And it just was uh, kind of a pain in the neck. But now built into the car, you can actually view the footage live, not live, but uh, you can view all the footage recorded both for dash cams and for the sentry mode. So let's check it out. All right, so what you do is you press here and then you launch the viewer. So as you can see, you can go to all, you can go to just sentry things that were picked up or you can just go to the dash cam. And then up comes uh, the viewer and basically it shows all four views and all you have to do is click on a different view to view it. So there's the rear, here's the left side, the front, and then the right side. The rear always looks better, I guess, because it's the rear camera. It's got more colors because the rest are used for kind of autopilot stuff. But let's go back here. I think if we go here, we'll be able to see. Here you got the rear view. There's a Lamborghini Huracan right behind us. You can actually scrub through the clip too. You can fast forward using this dial right here. All right, so here we got the Huracan. You got all the different views. We're looking at the rear view now. Huracan's <laughs> way back there. Tesla got it huge jump on it oh he's not catching he's not catching but let's see when he finally pulls up around here we can probably switch the camera angle you're coming on the left so i'm going to click on left when you go to pass and there it goes all right so now i'm going to head on back home grab all the numbers from the drag in the v box and do a quick wrap up of all the numbers and what we actually got with this uh, awesome update from tesla all right, so on to the numbers. First of all, I want to thank Jason for letting me borrow his car for a little bit and doing this 
testing on yeah, these Model S Raven. So these numbers are great because they are on the same exact car. So before and after results, before the update, uh, I think we did initial testing on his car a, a month or so ago, and now we have the same exact car, same setup with just this, I guess Tesla's calling the Cheetah update because of the way the car hunkers down for the new launch mode. But on to the numbers nevertheless. First, let's talk about the power. Peak power on his car before at uh, 98 to 100% was 580 kilowatt, and today we got 614 kilowatt. That's a difference of 34 kilowatt. Convert that to horsepower, we're at about 46 horsepower. This is that horsepower bump that Elon talked about a couple months ago. And if you watch the, the power on the power curve when it's there, it looks like there's more power to the curve as well because you can see it holding upwards close to 600 for a pretty long period of time before the power starts to drop off. Eighth mile, 6.77, 102 miles an hour previously, and now it's getting 671 at 103 and a half miles an hour. On to the quarter mile, previous best. Now keep in mind, these are non-prep, non-drag strip conditions. The car is spinning. So before in the quarter mile, we got 1067, 124 miles an hour. And after the update, we're getting 1054 at 127 and a half miles an hour. That is on an unprep surface. So next up, we got the 60 to 130 times, uh, 9.23 before and 8.68 afterwards. That's that high end, top end pulling power. And half a second is quite a bit of improvement. That's that power under the curve that we're seeing it have for a longer period of time. So a couple other notes before we finish up the video. This is on an unprepped service, as I said before. Jason's car has the heavy 21 inch standard wheels. So there are options from Tesla to get lighter wheels. Those are the arachnids and those are considerably lighter. Uh, I did a video on that a while ago. I think it's about nine to 10 pounds per wheel that you save when you add those wheels. So if Jason has those optional wheels on his car, I believe we're definitely gonna drop down into the 2.3 range to 60 miles an hour and probably another 10th off the quarter mile into the 10-4 range on the street. And of course, at a drag strip when you're not getting that little bit of wheel spin we're getting on street services, I expect this Tesla update to break in the 10 threes in the quarter mile. So in summary with this update, we got a pickup of 46 horsepower, we dropped the zero to 60 time on street services, and we dropped the quarter mile time, and we got that increased highway pulling power. It's an awesome update from Tesla. As soon as the drag strip's open down here in South Florida, we're gonna get this car to the drag strip, good prep surface, and I think I'm gonna put my arachnid wheels on Jason's car, and let's go for the new Model S record, hopefully going in the 10.3 range for the Model S, super excited about that. And lastly, but not least, I'm sure everyone's gonna be commenting, what about the Taycan? Well, these are different conditions as I ran out there and then we ran out here, it's hard to compare, but that car was running 10.5 in the quarter mile as well, so, I'm expecting these cars with the Tesla with the latest software to be really, really close. Uh, obviously, we're delayed on getting that race together due to the coronavirus and all the tracks being closed. Believe it or not, that started right around when I was doing that initial Taycan test. Uh, and, uh, you know, look, we just got to be safe and do the right thing. And I'm hoping I could eventually bring you all that heads up race down the quarter mile at a drag strip. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified of the upcoming videos.